wanted to walk down the aisle with my brother, so I wore a pure white dress. You, ugly as you are, should just enter from behind us all alone. No, seriously, you should stop with that kind of talk. You're the one who's going to get the cold stares, you know? Of course, if they see me in this pure white dress, it's only natural that their eyes will widen in shock. Wait, what? I, I don't really get what you're saying, but listen, today is my wedding with Randy. And yet the bride's sister showing up in a wedding dress would just make everyone think you're a weirdo. That's not going to happen. I look way better in this dress than you do, so I'm sure everyone will appreciate the sight. Compared to someone like you who looks like a dress draped over a bucket full of mud, it's a no-brainer. This is the first time in my life I've been called a bucket full of mud. Oh, is that right? Well, that's surprising. I think anyone who sees you would think the same, though. Sure, you're younger and cuter than me, but if you keep doing terrible things like this, it's going to ruin your cuteness, don't you think? You took my brother away from me, so who do you think you are? That is much worse. We've both lost our parents. We're each other's only family. You wouldn't understand that because you've been living a cozy life. That must have been tough, but this isn't about stealing Randy away from anyone. We both decided to get married to each other. No way, you brainwashed him. My brother is so smart, capable, and kind, there is no way he would abandon his only family, which is me. I don't think Randy abandoned you at all. Even after marrying me, you can still see him, you know? But we used to live together, and now it's just going to be the two of you living together. I can't stand the thought of that. I heard you all talked about it, though. Shut up. Regardless, you're a thief. Someone like you, a low-level woman, shouldn't even come near my brother. I'll make this day all about my wedding. Stop it. I'm not saying this to hurt you. You'll end up embarrassing yourself. Seriously. The one who should be embarrassed is you, wearing a dress that doesn't even suit you. Anyway, it's almost time for the ceremony to start, and I'll be sure to showcase how fabulous I look in the venue. Wait a minute. I mean, think about it. This is a special day, and you're trying to steal the spotlight? It's inappropriate. You don't want people to talk badly about you, do you? Oh, please. You think that's what's going to happen? They'll be too busy admiring my stunning appearance to even notice you. Stunning? You're delusional. Just because you're wearing a wedding dress doesn't mean you look good in it. You should really take a good look at yourself in the mirror. That's rich coming from you. You're just jealous. You can't stand the fact that I'm the one marrying Randy, the one he loves. Loves? You mean he's been manipulated by you? It's not real love if he can just turn his back on his sister who's been there for him through everything. You really need to let go of this possessiveness. Randy is an adult who can make his own decisions. He chose me, and that should tell you something. I don't care what you say. The fact that you're wearing a wedding dress today is completely unacceptable. This is my wedding day, and I won't let you ruin it by showing off in a dress you don't deserve. Wow, looks like all the eyes were on me after all. You really have no standing here as the bride. Well, of course, the attention was on you. It's much more unusual than the bride showing up. Exactly. I'm a thousand times more beautiful than you. I may not have been able to walk down the aisle with my brother, but now it's clear that everyone was focusing on me instead of you. Hey, is Randy really okay? He seems super angry. Is your goal to make him mad? I don't mind. My brother isn't very good at being honest with his feelings. Deep down, he truly loves me, his only family. That love makes him want to push me away, it seems. Isn't he supposed to be able to celebrate his loving family's wedding? Of course, I'm celebrating my brother's wedding. But the problem is that he's marrying someone as ugly as you, who is worse than anything this world has to offer. Ugly? You can't just say that to someone. That's how unworthy you are of my brother. You're not suitable for him as a wife or even as a co-worker. Well, I don't think that's true. We met at work, but that was just a coincidence. Stop lying. You purposely interviewed at the same company as my brother to get close to him, didn't you? Well, that doesn't make any sense. I was studying at the University of Michigan. How would I have known about Randy, who was in Arizona? 
You're just throwing out excuses. I think my reasoning is pretty sound here. Anyway, you're still not suitable as a coworker. I just told the company how inappropriate you are. What? You're getting fired now. My condolences. There's no way you should be allowed to work alongside my brother. Fired? What did you say to the company? I told them the truth. I said, that woman named Georgia isn't fit to work with your brother. And what did they say to that? They were like, oh, really? I think they were pretty shocked by it. Well, it's not so much that they were shocked. Melanie, you've really gone too far this time. It's one thing to mess with me, but dragging in innocent people and causing trouble for them is unacceptable. Shut up. I'm just telling you that my revenge on you isn't over yet. Wait, what are you planning to do next? You'll just have to wait and see. It's going to be spectacular. Trust me. I'm serious. You can't keep messing with people's lives like this. It's not just a game. Oh, but it's very much a game to me. I'm just getting started and you'll be the center of attention whether you like it or not. You're seriously deranged if you think this is okay. Deranged? Hardly. I'm just getting a little creative with my payback. You thought you could overshadow me today? Well, let's see how far you're willing to go to hold on to your little fairy tale. This isn't fair. You're the one who's been acting selfishly. Randy is supposed to be mine. It's not about being yours or mine. It's about what he wants, and that's me. You need to accept that. You have twisted everything. This was supposed to be a joyful occasion, but you've turned it into a battlefield. Please, Melanie, just think this through. There's no thinking this through for me. This is my moment, and you just happen to be in the way. I have no sister anymore. What? A big brother? What's going on? What are you talking about? I'm saying I'm cutting ties with you. I've put up with a lot until now, but I can't take it anymore. Hurting Georgia is absolutely unforgivable. Hey, are you angry about what happened earlier? I just spilled ink on Georgia's dress. I didn't hurt her or anything. It was just a joke. What do you mean, a joke? Don't kid around. Why did you even wear a wedding dress today? Don't you feel embarrassed doing something like that? But I looked better in it, didn't I? I wore the dress way better than Georgia. That's not the point. Are you serious right now? You really need to take a good look at yourself. You're the one who needs to wake up. What's so great about Georgia? You're just brainwashed. There must be someone more suitable for you out there. You're going to complain no matter who I marry, so I've been trying to ignore you. But what happened today is unacceptable. Do you have any idea how shocked Georgia must be? It's that girl who brainwashed you that's the problem. I genuinely believe that my brother deserves someone much better. Do you even know Georgia's true nature? She's really manipulative. And what proof do you have of that? You can just tell when you talk to her. That girl is definitely not as sweet as she seems. How dare you insult such a kind person like Georgia without any basis? You don't know anything at all. The one who doesn't understand is you, big brother. Please wake up. The people at your company have woken up. Huh? What are you talking about? I called your company. I told them that girl Georgia is bad news and they should fire her. They agreed. What are you doing? What do you mean they agreed? What exactly did they say? They said, oh, really? So you really need to open your eyes. That girl is no good for you. When did this happen? Just a moment ago. You've got to be kidding me. I have to call them right now and apologize. Seriously, what were you thinking? Do you realize the chaos you've created? You can't just mess with someone's life like that. I just did, and I am proud of it. You need to see the truth about Georgia before it's too late. What truth? All you have is unfounded hatred. No, I have a gut feeling, and it's telling me to steer clear of her. I've seen how she acts, and trust me, it's not pretty. You're not making any sense. You're just jealous because she's marrying me. Jealous? Hardly. I'm looking out for you. I don't want you to end up with someone like her who doesn't deserve your love. 
You're so twisted. You have no idea how great Georgia is. She's kind, caring, and would never hurt anyone. Caring? You call what she did caring? She stood there and let you get humiliated. How is that kind? What are you talking about? You're the one who caused that scene. No, I only did what was necessary to make you see the light. You are blinded by your feelings. I see things clearly, and you're the one who needs help. Help? Is that what you call this nonsense? Trying to ruin my relationship with lies? It's not nonsense. I'm trying to save you from making the biggest mistake of your life. And what do you think you're accomplishing? You're just making things worse. You can't see what you're doing to yourself. You think I enjoy seeing you hurt? I'm trying to protect you. Protect me by destroying my happiness? That makes no sense. It makes perfect sense. You just can't see it. You're being manipulated, and it's time you realized it. Hey, where did you take Big Brother? I suddenly can't get in touch with him. He's currently making an apology call to his company, thanks to someone making unnecessary phone calls. Who is it? Uh, I absolutely can't forgive whoever it is. How could they deliberately cause trouble for my brother? It's you, you know. Huh? I never caused trouble for my brother. You're the one who called the company and spread lies about me directly. Now he's stuck apologizing on the phone, poor thing. It's your fault that my brother has to apologize. What are you going to do about it? It's your fault. Thanks to you pouring ink on me, the ceremony has been interrupted. It's not just interrupted. The ceremony should be canceled. You're not fit to be with my brother. Take off the dress and go home right now. Melanie, that dress is a rental from the venue, and it comes with a pretty hefty penalty fee if I have to return it damaged. What? You do realize there were witnesses to you pouring ink on me, right? So you'll definitely be responsible for paying for it. Do you understand that? What? How much is it? I'd say it's not less than $5,000. What? $5,000? Just for a dress? It's not just any dress. It's a wedding dress. It costs that much. Just renting it costs over $1,000. Don't lie, you scam artist. There is no way it costs that much. The wedding dress I got was only about $30. That was a cheap costume dress, right? It's not even a real wedding dress. It's just some outfit that looks like one. You think I don't know anything, and you're trying to scam me out of my money, aren't you? Aren't you embarrassed doing something like that? If you don't believe me, we can talk with the venue staff later, but with so many witnesses, you're still responsible for paying regardless. Well, if that's the case, then you're also at fault for holding a wedding when you're not fit to be a bride. Someone else would have poured ink on you if I hadn't. What kind of excuse is that? Regardless, you'll be paying for the damages. You have to take responsibility for what you've done. Shut up. What makes you think you can give me orders, you ugly thief? Melanie, how about we talk this out calmly? I have no intention of stealing Randy from you, and I genuinely want us to get along as a family. Huh? I don't remember agreeing to be family with you. Fine, let's not be family then. Let's be friends. We can talk things out before this gets any worse. What do you think we are? There's no way I'd become friends with someone like you. And it's your fault we're in this mess, so you owe me an apology. If you can't be friends, then I'll have no choice but to demand compensation. What? Well, it's true, isn't it? You poured ink on me in front of everyone, especially at a wedding. If I took this to court, I'd win for sure. Compensation? So it's all about the money for you, huh? Making money off my brother's wedding is the lowest of the low. I can't believe how you keep coming up with these ridiculous excuses. But I'm serious about this. <laughs> I'd rather pay than become friends with you. My brother can afford to pay that small amount for compensation anyway. You really think Randy will pay for you? Of course, he's my family. Isn't that obvious? I'll check to see if he's done on the phone. Hold on, you have got to be kidding me. Oh, you really don't see the trouble you're in, do you? Do you have any idea how serious this is? 
Not only did you disrupt my wedding day, but now you're making a complete fool of yourself. That's what you think? I'm the one making a fool of myself? Look in the mirror for a change. This whole situation is absurd. You need to realize just how ridiculous you're being right now. Ridiculous? Oh, please. You have no idea what ridiculous is. Do you honestly think your little stunt didn't catch anyone's attention? Of course it did. People are talking about me, and guess what? They're all looking at you like you're some kind of villain in this story. You wanted the spotlight, and congratulations, you got it. Oh, really? They're looking at me? You must be delusional. I think you're projecting your insecurities onto me. It's quite sad, really. I'm done with this nonsense. Hey, big brother, Georgia says she's going to sue me for damages. You're going to pay for it, right? Are you serious? I thought I made it clear that I wanted to cut ties with you. Why on earth would I have to cover for Georgia's damages? Well, aren't you concerned about me? I'm worried in many ways. Melanie, just go and apologize to Georgia. Why should I apologize to someone who deceived you? She is the worst kind of person. Can't you see that? Listen, you don't understand anything. Georgia has stood by you all this time. What do you mean? I've been trying to cut ties with you for a long time now, but Georgia, having also lost her parents, wanted to stay on your side and support you. She's been trying to help you and you don't even realize it. Georgia lost her parents? That's why I didn't leave you. Melanie, Georgia has helped you time and time again and treated you kindly, haven't you noticed? She's always been there for you when you needed someone. Well, that's just a plan to take you away from me. She is deceitful. I won't be fooled by her. Think whatever you want, regardless of what Georgia has said to me. I've decided to cut ties with you. From today onward, we're no longer family. Brother, you're joking, right? I won't believe something like that. You can't just throw me away like this. This is no joke. Starting today, you need to leave this house. It's time for you to live on your own and reflect on yourself. You need to understand that this behavior is not acceptable. Why are you choosing her over me? We're the only family we have. We've been through so much together. I'm not choosing anyone. I just wanted to expand my family. Love is not a competition, Melanie. It's about supporting each other and being there for one another. What do you mean? There's no hierarchy in family, right? I wanted to support the one I love, Georgia, alongside the one I love, you. But now you're making it impossible for me to do that. But you're going to make me leave the home we've shared together? That's the same as abandoning me. How can you even think of doing that? I intended to keep paying the rent. Didn't I tell you that? I won't leave you without support. But you need to stand on your own two feet. Melanie, you're too dependent on me. You're only remaining family. It's time for you to distance yourself from me. You need to grow and learn how to handle things without relying on me all the time. No, I don't want to be apart from you. I don't want to be alone. I've lost mom and dad already. You're all I have left. I understand that you're scared, but you have to learn to face your fears. I can't always be there to protect you. You need to become independent. This is not about me abandoning you. This is about you growing as a person. No, you're wrong. I can't live without you. I need you. No, I can't keep spoiling you. You need to think about what you should do moving forward. It's not healthy for either of us if you keep depending on me like this. But I don't know how to be on my own. I don't know what to do without you guiding me. You'll figure it out, Melanie. Everyone has to go through this phase. I had to do it too. I learned and grew stronger and so will you. But I'm terrified. I can't just leave everything behind. Life is scary, but you can't let that paralyze you. It's a part of growing up. You're really going to throw me out just like that? I can't believe you. 
I'm not throwing you out. I'm giving you a chance to grow. No, you can't do this to me. Please, don't do this. <laughs> Georgia, hey, I'm sorry for everything. Please convince my brother. I'm begging you. It seems like he's serious about cutting ties with me. I think Randy has put a lot of thought into this decision. I've tried to convince him all this time, but I doubt he's willing to listen anymore. Look, I really appreciate you, and besides, you've lost your parents too, haven't you? I didn't even know that, and I've been so cruel. That's not really a problem for me, but as Randy said, you need to become independent one day. I've only been helping you out until now, and I might not have truly considered what's best for you. Please, you've helped me so much until now. Can't you help me just one more time? All right, but you need to be serious about this. Huh? You'll need to pay for the dress damages with your own money and also compensate me for the emotional distress with your own earnings. Is that clear? W what? No, that's impossible. I don't even have a job. That's why you need to find one. If you can manage that properly, there might be a chance for you to come back to the family. Are you serious? If I do that, will my brother forgive me? Of course, Randy has always wanted you to become independent. It's essential that you learn to take responsibility for your actions. I understand. Oh, and just so you know, I won't go easy on you. I'll pursue this to the fullest extent. I'm pretty upset about being called ugly and having ink spilled on me. What? Oh, could you at least be a little kinder about that? You need to take responsibility for your actions. That's ultimately for your own good. But I've never done anything like this before. I don't know where to start. Look, you've got to face the music. It's about time you learned how to stand on your own. No more depending on others. This is a chance for you to grow. I get it, but it's so scary. What if I fail? Failure is a part of life, Melanie. Everyone goes through it. But you can't let fear hold you back. If you really want to be a part of the family again, you'll have to put in the effort and show that you can take care of yourself. I know, but what if it's too much for me? What if I can't find a job or I mess things up again? Then you'll just have to keep trying. Persistence is key. It won't be easy, but I believe you can do it. If you really want to change things, you have to be willing to put in the work. I understand. I'll try my best, but it feels overwhelming. Georgia, I'm really sorry about everything today. I'm just relieved we managed to get through the wedding without any major issues, but I know I've caused you quite a bit of trouble. No, no, I should be the one apologizing. I've been the one supporting Melanie all this time and opposing the idea of cutting ties with her. I have to admit I've spoiled her in some ways, so the way things have turned out is also my responsibility. Ever since our parents passed away, Melanie has been my only family. Even without anyone telling me, I found it hard to sever ties with her. I was fed up with her behavior, but still, I couldn't bring myself to do it. But I never expected things to escalate to this point. I thought she was a sensible girl in many ways, so this situation has really surprised me. I can understand your worries. Melanie's always had her insecurities, but it seems like she genuinely regrets what happened today. Perhaps this will be a turning point for her. Yeah, I think she'll be all right. Deep down, she does care for her brother, even if it doesn't always show. Her feelings for you are strong, and that might be enough for her to realize her mistakes. She just needs to learn to express that love in a more positive way. After the events of that day, Melanie found herself grappling with the reality of her actions and the consequences that followed. The outcome was that she was required to pay for the damages to the wedding dress, as well as compensatory damages to me for the distress she caused. The total amount came to a staggering $30,000, a sum that weighed heavily on her shoulders. This financial burden was not just a slap on the wrist, it was a significant amount that would require serious commitment and effort to pay off. 
As a result of this situation, she had no choice but to move out of the house where she had been living with my brother. It was a difficult transition for her, one that forced her to confront her independence and the choices she had made. Now she had to face the world on her own, starting to live by herself while simultaneously juggling part-time jobs to manage her payments. This change was not easy, but it was necessary. From what I've observed, Melanie appears to be genuinely determined to reunite with my brother and regain her place within the family. It seems that her desire to return to the family unit has fueled her perseverance. Despite the challenges she faces, she's shown a remarkable level of resilience, which I hadn't noticed before. Each day she wakes up and commits to working hard, showing that she is willing to put in the effort to turn her life around. I find a sense of comfort in knowing that she is likely reflecting on her past behaviors and taking the necessary steps to improve herself. This journey of self-discovery might just be what she needs to learn the valuable lessons about responsibility, respect, and the consequences of her actions. While it's clear that this experience has been a wake-up call for her, I know it will take several years for her to fully pay off the debt. It's a long road ahead, and the reality of managing finances and living independently can be quite daunting. Nonetheless, I hope that during this time, she will continue to reflect on her actions and grow from them. The situation is undoubtedly a crucial moment in her life, one that will shape her character and influence her decisions in the future. As I consider the years ahead, I genuinely hope that once Melanie completes her payments, we can rebuild our relationship. I long for the day when we can establish a positive dynamic as family members again. Families, after all, are often tested through various challenges and overcoming those difficulties can lead to stronger bonds. While our relationship has certainly been rocky, I hold on to the hope that one day we'll be able to connect, support each other, and even share in our joys as a family. It's important for both of us to acknowledge our past mistakes and work towards a brighter future together. The journey may not be straightforward, and it might take time for her to regain my trust, but I am open to giving it a chance. After all, family is about supporting each other through thick and thin, and I'm willing to be there for Melanie as she navigates this challenging path towards redemption and growth. With each passing month, I've noticed signs of maturity in Melanie. She seems to be stepping up to the plate, learning how to take care of herself and making a genuine effort to be more responsible. It's heartening to see her engaging with her new life, trying to carve out a better future for herself. Each small success she experiences along the way serves as a step toward healing and personal growth. I recognize that these changes don't happen overnight. They require time and effort. I often find myself reflecting on the moments we shared as a family before the fallout. Despite the painful events that transpired, I cherish the times filled with laughter, joy, and the bonds that we once had. It's difficult to let go of the hope that these moments can return. However, for that to happen, Melanie must continue on her path of self-improvement and personal development. The fact that she's diligently working to pay off her debt speaks volumes about her character. It shows that she's capable of hard work and commitment when she sets her mind to it. I genuinely believe that if she can maintain this focus and determination, she can achieve many great things in her life. Each day presents her with an opportunity to prove to herself and to others that she is capable of growth and change. As I think about how our relationship might evolve in the coming years, I find myself hopeful. I believe that with open communication and mutual understanding, we can rebuild the foundation of trust that once existed between us. It may require patience and effort from both sides, but I believe it is worth striving for. After all, family is about supporting each other through thick and thin, and I am willing to be there for Melanie as she navigates this challenging path toward redemption and growth. In conclusion, while Melanie's journey is just beginning, I am optimistic about the future. I look forward to the day that we can sit down together, discuss our past openly, and move forward with a renewed sense of family. I hope that one day we will be able to look back on this challenging time as a turning point that ultimately led to a stronger bond between us. After all, family is about supporting each other, and I'm willing to be there for Melanie as she learns from her mistakes and grows into a more responsible person. As we continue our individual journeys, I have faith that the lessons we've experienced together will bring us closer in the end. The road ahead may not always be smooth, but with determination, understanding, and love, I believe we can build a better future for ourselves and our family. I imagine a future where Melanie can share her successes and experiences with me, where we can laugh together, support one another, and create new memories. 
This future, while still uncertain, is something I deeply desire. I want us to come together as a family once more to heal the wounds of the past and to embrace the opportunities that lie ahead. With every challenge we face, we can either let it tear us apart or bring us closer together. I choose the latter. As time goes on, I remain committed to being a supportive figure in Melanie's life. I want her to know that I believe in her potential to change and grow. The challenges she faces now are merely stepping stones towards a brighter future, and I will be here to guide her through it. I hope she understands that while forgiveness may take time, it's always possible if both parties are willing to work toward it. Through all of this, I remain hopeful that one day we will find our way back to each other, stronger and more connected than ever before. After all, family's not just about blood, it's about the bonds we create and the love we share. As I reflect on our experiences, I can't help but think of the lessons we've learned, both individually and as a family. The situation with Melanie has taught me that forgiveness is a powerful tool, one that can heal wounds and mend relationships. It requires vulnerability, understanding, and a willingness to move past the hurt. I recognize that it won't be easy, but it is essential for the growth of both Melanie and myself. I believe that every individual has the potential to change, to learn from their mistakes, and to become a better version of themselves. Melanie's journey is a testament to this idea. While she made poor choices, she's now taking responsibility for those actions. This willingness to acknowledge her mistakes is a crucial step in her growth. It's also a reminder that people can change when they're willing to put in the work. As I think about Melanie's future, I envision her becoming a stronger and more capable person. I see her embracing independence, learning new skills, and perhaps even pursuing her passions. I believe that this journey will empower her to take control of her life and make choices that align with her values. This transformation is not just about overcoming the challenges she faces now, it's about laying the groundwork for a fulfilling life ahead.